When I was a young six-year-old kid, my bike was kept locked in the wooden shed in the backyard. That shed had a rather large, intimidating-looking brass-style padlock on it. Despite its chunky size, the padlock could be opened if I jammed a Playmobil sword backwards up the padlock keyhole and randomly twisted it about. I don't remember why I knew to do that, but I do know that ever since those days, many padlocks were often seen as a suggestion not to go somewhere rather than an enforcement of that. Over the next 40 years, I paid a bit more attention to the average person when it comes to locks. Living in a big city and knowing what challenges I frequently dealt with in the past, I still usually carry an EPCO 1 elevator key. You wouldn't believe how handy that key has been. At the beginning of the COVID-19 lockdown, I started to take a bit more of an organised interest in locks. So I got myself a cheap lock picking set and spent some time trying to properly educate myself. The standard acrylic educational training lock was a breeze to get through, and soon I was working on bigger locks. The locks got more varied, and I was getting faster at getting into them. Quickly I realised that I needed some better picks. So I upgraded my tools to something a bit thinner and stronger, and I've continued down this path. Something I have learned along the way is there's actually something called lock sport, and things can get quite competitive. When the pandemic is over, I wouldn't mind trying my hand at something like this, and it's probably going to be a place that is perfect for picking up new information. On Reddit, there is a group called R Lock Picking. It pokes fun at the Six Sigma system by using the belt ranking system, but it aims to teach and share information about security and locks. I'm currently a yellow belt, and having just been given a Master Lock 575 for Christmas, now I have a lock in my possession that qualifies for the orange belt. This is my submission video. Note that the lock is shown to be working before and after, as well as the entire picking process being done in one take with no editing, and the lock never leaves the camera frame. Okay, this is user calls going for his Reddit uh, belt. What we have here is a master lock 575. As you can see, it's locked. Use the key. Now it's open. Lock it back up. Locked. Okay. I'm going to use bottom of the keyway tension. And we're going to use a standard pick. Okay. Nothing on one. Nothing on two. Nothing there. Keep going. On, click there. Okay, nothing on one, nothing on two, nothing on three, nothing on four. Click on five. Okay, let's make sure everything's still seated nicely. Nothing on one. Click on two. Nothing on three. Click on four. Nothing on five. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so it's open. As you can see, the key now does not go all the way in. If I do it back up, I have to just turn it slightly. Now I can get it in, unlock properly, do it back up. So again, this is the Master Lock 575 user calls. So hopefully, in a few days, I'll get my orange belt, and then I can go for my green belt. One of the other things that the r -Lock Picking Group has on its agenda is making sure that the rules are followed. Having knowledge and tools can be construed by some as problematic by either the uneducated people or the people that they think they have something to lose. Just think to when the printing press was invented, and suddenly everyone had access to cheaper books and education. Some people really didn't like this, and in some countries, girls are still not educated properly to this day, just to keep the men in a situation of advantage over them. The same applies to security and lock picking. Many people don't like you knowing how to pick locks or having the tools. 
But one of the first things you realise when you start picking locks is actually how atrocious most of them actually are. In some places it's still considered illegal to own or carry lock picking tools. In Ontario where I am, this is not the case. So the general rules and ethics of this are, number one, don't pick a lock that is not yours, and number two, don't pick a lock that you are using for anything. The reason for these two rules is as follows. First, when you pick a lock that is not actually yours, you run the risk of trespassing, and that's illegal. Second, when you pick a lock, there's a small chance you might break it, or you might break the tools in the lock. So don't go picking your own front door, because that could get expensive when you have to hire a locksmith to go and fix it. There are plenty of practice locks you can purchase, or you just go to your local hardware store and get something to practice on. I even have practice car locks, just to hone my skills on. I still have a lot to learn. This Abus lock is my next challenge, where I have to both pick it and dismantle it. It requires me to get some slightly different picks as this keyway is a bit too narrow for my current picks to get into. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Well, thanks for watching. Bye.